Today we continue our study of the Exodus, God's people escaping an oppressive government and fleeing into the desert and setting up their own system of governance, which basically is designed to faithfully follow God's guidance in their time of need. Last week we began our story looking at how God's acts in our lives. In fact, we saw in Moses' case that even before he was born, he was being prepared for his calling. We saw how in our own lives, God acts even before we know. That God is faithful to us even before we are faithful to him. We learned how Moses was born in difficult times after the people of God had been forced into slavery. And we saw how God protected him miraculously and prepared him for a life of leadership and service. By having him adopted by the emperor and the emperor's daughter, the pharaoh, who would become his rival. This is how God is. He has a plan for us, and all it takes for us is to be faithful. When you see evil or face evil in your life, do you see God working? Do you know that he's already been involved in your life preparing you for this moment? We learned last week, and we will see today, how God continues to reveal himself to us and to guide us for the path that he has. So think about it. Think about where we are currently in our history. This is currently one of the most challenging times in U.S. history. We could all be saying, where is God and how could God be doing this? How would God allow this to happen, a virus and social turmoil and violence? We could be frustrated with God because we live in a free and broken world where viruses and riots seem to reign. We could be angry with God because we live in the midst of economic hardship, a new kind of economic hardship, one that we've not faced before. Or we could see in this moment that God has his hand on us, that he prepared us for this moment. God has raised us up. He's made us a people of compassion. In fact, if you look around, you can see examples of this. Churches are finding new ways to be the hands of Christ in ministry. In this moment, churches are finding new ways to be the church. This week I heard of a church that's opened its doors to developmentally disabled children in their community, and they've become a showpiece of compassion and grace. Our session has been working on a way to responsibly open our doors to children in our community who don't have internet access in this time of learning from home. I'm so proud of them. Just yesterday, I heard Rhonda Reeves, our children's director, tell us how they were delivering packets of school supplies and gifts for the children who are distance learning this year. These are ways in which the church can adapt. We've been prepared for this. We have the resources. It's just a matter of whether or not we'll be faithful. All these things and so many more across our nation are happening now in the name of Christ. You could see this as a great challenge in the church or an incredible opportunity. When the world doesn't know where to turn, I believe God has been already working to prepare us for this moment. In fact, this is, a, this is Moses' story. You think about Moses, it's a story of God's people in the Exodus. It's the story of God's people today as well. Faithful people adapt and respond with grace in unexpected circumstances. We do that simply because we're people of faith and we know God is active. So where we are today in the story, let's remember the story of Moses. Moses was born. Then he was saved because 
Pharaoh was trying to kill the children, but, but Moses was saved by Pharaoh's very da daughter. And he's adopted and raised by the emperor's daughter before the people even cried out for help. God, uh, Moses was being prepared by God. By the time our story starts, Moses had fled Egypt. He had grown up and he had witnessed as a young adult a taskmaster beating a Hebrew slave. And when he came to the slave's aid, he killed the Hebrew and he was then forced to flee. And now he lives in Midian. He's hiding. Can you imagine all that wasted talent? He was the adopted grandson of the emperor of the largest empire on earth. The prince of Egypt was hiding in the wilderness wearing a cotton robe and shepherding sheep with a stick. What a waste of talent. But yet, that's when God calls him, when he least expects it. God speaks to him in the dramatic. It's the miracle of the burning bush. So Moses is in Midian, he's tending his sheep, and the people have prayed for God's help. And in this moment, this bush appears, and it's burning, and it's not being consumed. There's fire, but there's no ash or smoke. That doesn't happen in the real world. Moses approaches the bushes because he's never seen anything like it. And then the bush begins to talk to him. Don't you know Moses must have thought he was insane? And not only that, the bush says, Moses, this is holy ground. Take off your shoes. You see, even in God's house, there are rules. Don't soil holy ground with dirty shoes. Come to God clean and blameless, prepared for the task to which you were called. If you're part of the medical world and you're fighting this virus, or, or you're part of the authorities that's trying to calm our communities in the midst of violence, bring your faith and your grace and your goodness. But don't bring your racism or hatred Bring your goodness, but take off your shoes. Don't soil the holy ground. It's as if God is saying to Moses, bring your training and your upbringing. But remember, this is holy ground. This is your calling. Serve God by serving the people. In response to his calling, Moses asked the only appropriate question. Uh, who are you? And... Uh, what, what do I tell others about you? You see, bushes don't just burn and not be consumed. Well, here again, you learn something about God. God doesn't act like you'd expect him to act. He says, they know who I am. Tell them I am who I am. I am God. And God has a plan. You see, what we learn from Moses in this moment is that you can be part of the plan, but Moses had to choose to be faithful. He had been prepared all his life, but there was a moment where he had to choose. Would he follow the God who says, I am who I am? Trust me. You see, our problem as human beings is we're better at listening to ourselves than we are at listening to others. Even miracles. We're especially bad at listening to God. So because of this, I think God often has to act dramatically. He's got to kind of shake us so that we can see what's happening. He's got to surprise us to get our attention. So God speaks to us from burning bushes, or he makes noise in our lives, or he works through the crisis of human evil or the brokenness of the world so that we might pay attention. As you know, in a crisis, that's when priorities really come into focus. So God acts that way to get us back on track. He sets our priorities in order once again. Again, think of the crisis in our country. Think how different this crisis is from all the others in the past. This crisis 
isn't localized like a tornado or a hurricane. It affects all of us. The virus affects everybody. And the social unrest is calling each of us to look deep into ourselves and do something about it. In fact, this is not a moment to wait for the government or somebody else to fix these problems. Each of us needs to take some responsibility. This is a moment in history that requires us to act and to act faithfully like Moses. Waiting for others to be responsible or to fix this is not what we're called to. We need to be faithful and we need to step up. Each of us needs to be responsible in our behavior. We need to be responsible for not putting people at risk for their health. We need to not participate in the news reports or with anything or any action that dehumanizes any human being. We are the people of the Christian faith and we know that all human beings are created in the image of God, regardless of their skin color or the uniform they wear. Every human being is created in the image of God and is due that respect. And where there is brokenness, it should be restrained and healed. And when there is goodness, it should be encouraged. Today as a nation, the news and the world would have you believe that the most important thing that's going on is an election. We're so caught up in politics and corruption and questioning the news that we've lost our way. But now, God has shaken us with the crisis of health and civil unrest. And we're called to something new. It might seem like wandering the desert, but we are called to something new. A new plan, a new vision. Being the people of grace in a time of turmoil. It's our calling, and God is reminding us of how things are supposed to be. We are to be neighbors. We're to find new ways of being the hands of Christ in ministry. There's so much need out there. We're called to follow Christ's example. Can we love our enemies? Can we bring healing? Can we be the hands of God in our broken and hurting world in this particular moment? This is Moses' story. He fled Egypt, but God called him back with a shaking his world with a burning bush. And at that moment in history, at that moment in Moses' life, he had to choose, and he chose to be faithful. He had to decide if he would follow God. He could have remained a shepherd, running away from his calling, hiding in the desert, or he could be faithful and see where God would lead him. Moses chose to be faithful. And the rest of Exodus and the rest of this book testifies to the faithfulness of Moses. I think we're in the same boat as Moses. We've been touched by God. We've been reminded that he is the great I am. And now the question is, will you be faithful? Open your eyes to what God is calling you. Be open to a new direction that displays grace in a world that is divided and full of hatred? That's the question, really, I think, that's posed by the burning bush this morning. And it's the question for our church today. Will we just be Sunday Christians? Faith is an afterthought. Or will we be instruments of grace acting on faith? Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you have called us to be, faith, to be faithful and to make a difference. God, give us your vision. Direct us on your path. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen.